My first impression of Blair is I was afraid of the school. When you drove by it as a kid in junior high, I thought it was a college. I just thought it was too large uh, to hold my little body in there. Um, so I actually wanted to go to Northwood. And I tried desperately to get into Northwood and be on that football team. Uh, but, you know, you come to Blair, and what I realized was that every high school is the same. You have your cliques, you have your jocks, your, your geeks, your freaks. Uh, and I fit in uh, quite nicely, and it's uh, something that I still cherish to this day. The teachers I remember best are the ones who got me. Uh, Mrs. Mays is my, my speech teacher, uh, Miss Diodati. Um, they got me. I, I used to change my name <laughs> every year. Uh, on opening day, during home, you know, the first class, it asked roll call, and it says Carlos Hernandez here, and I'd say, yeah, uh, I don't go by Carlos, I go by Moses. That'd be the first period. Second period, I go by Dazzle. I had seven different names uh, each year. Um, and like Mrs. Mazes, she would call me Moses, and I just thought it was the funniest thing, but with a wink of an eye, she allowed me to do that. So those kind of teachers, obviously my coaches, uh, Frank Wilkinson, uh, my football coach, uh, Bill Lindsay, who was my JV football coach, uh, Mr. Mallory, uh, my baseball coach, who I, uh, yeah, those, those type of individuals I remember greatly. I think what I remember most about the teachers, they were kind of young uh, when you look back at it now. And so they, they got that generation. They knew that we were different than the, you know, the, the last generation. We knew, they knew that we'd be different than the next generation. Uh, and they got us. Uh, and they, I think they, like a coach, taught us, they taught the student, they matched the, they matched the skills up. Uh, if I could, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't, here's the curriculum, we gotta do this. It was more, all right, this student, I gotta massage a little more, this student I don't have to. They were more flexible that way. In the 80s back here in Blair, uh, it was a wild time, I think. Um, you know, we were obviously at that age uh, and my group experiencing a lot of different things, the, the advent of music videos, uh, certainly drugs were, were starting to get prevalent. Uh, and so there was a lot of different avenues that we could go down. Um, it, was a, it was a crazy, I thought it was a crazy time. Uh, and so we latched on to each other. My teachers will know this, I think all my teachers will know this, that uh, I relished the role of class clown. Uh, I was always, you know, I'm sure I was disruptive uh, to a certain degree, uh, but I enjoyed myself and I wanted to enjoy my experience. And I have got more comfortable in front of groups of people and I think that was one of the key things to me doing what I do today is I feel comfortable in front of folks being myself. Uh, and at Blair, as a class clown, as the quarterback of the football team, uh, as a, the center fielder on the baseball team, you know, it always was in front of me. I had to have everything in front of me. That's how I, I kind of view life. I don't like to be on the side. I want to be in the center and I want to see everything. Uh, so it, it, Blair certainly has had an impact on, on my life and my you, career. Um... Uh, the, one of the fondest memories to this day is we formed a group called the BS Club. And that was a group that started back in Eastern Junior High, Bill Moose and Brian Plunkett and a group of guys who started this BS club. Now, most think, people think BS meant what you hear BS to mean, but we had it as the Boys Service Club. We got chartered into the, the student government. And we would go out and do canned food drives. We would go to, to the old folks' homes. And we also cheered at sporting events. Now, I played football, so I could see the BS club up there. We, we were at basketball games. Uh, but that, that close-knit group of guys has grown and stayed together we play a football game every year. It's called the annual BS Bowl, or the annual now Bill Moose Bowl, because he passed away. Uh, we are what year 20, 20, I think we had our 28th year annual football game. Uh, it went from tackle to touch to flag now because we are getting up in age. But that, that group of guys are, are still very close. So Bill, Bill was, the, was the president of the BS club, a guy who was like, he was like, like John Belushi, just an outgoing guy who you could not, his voice was, was recognizable anywhere you went, in the halls, at a party, you always heard Bill Moose. And this BS club started, and you know, I'm sure the people outside of our group thought, this is a bunch of BS. 
Uh, but for us, uh, yeah, we had the best parties. They were big, huge parties we had. But we also knew that there was an underlying thing. Uh, and it's really kept us to this day. You know, when it starts to roll around near Thanksgiving, the emails start flying out. All right, who's playing in the BS Bowl? Uh, and there's the trophy we hand out. It's got Bill Moose's name on it. And it goes to the MVP. I won the first year. And it's a, it's a source of pride uh, to this day. I think the only thing for me, the tradition of the seal in the school, right in the floor by the, by the office. That's where our lockers were and we all hung out there. And that's where the most famous or infamous Im uh, event took place. And that's, I got suspended the last three days of high school for organizing a food fight with the, uh, the guard on the basketball team, Lorenzo Gill. We put out flyers and, it, and it, at noon, and the teachers knew it. At noon, all the teachers, we all went downstairs for, for lunch and we all put on baggies. And at about 11.58 or so, we all stood up and the teachers were all of a sudden down there for some reason watching us eat lunch. And they all got up and said, don't do anything. We were like, well, what do you mean? And we all took our baggies off, threw them in the trash, came upstairs to our lockers where the food was. And Dr. Villani walked out, stood on the seal, and the food fight commenced. Nobody touched him. Food everywhere, flew everywhere, right by him. We were done, we all offered to clean up. He said, okay. And then uh, I think sixth period, the little yellow slips came down. Come see Dr. Villani's office. And there was probably about 20, 25 of us in that office. When I walked in, they all kind of pointed. I, what? And literally, I, we proved the fact. Dr. Curry went and got the three eggs that were in my girlfriend's purse, Michelle. Two eggs were unbroken, one was broken. And I said, I didn't throw a thing. And his line to me was, you had the notion, but not the motion. You're gone for three days. Certainly Blair has a rich tradition in sports, athletics. Uh, I kind of hurt that tradition while I played, but I, I just remember the feeling being a 10th grader and being in that auditorium and seeing the state title basketball team rise up out of the floor uh, to Space Odyssey 2001. That just that, that music and seeing these guys standing there very proud and then the state championship trophy there. Uh, our swim team, going to sound odd, I was on that swim team, but more for comedic value. Very good team. We were in the finals. Uh, yeah, it just, you know, to this day, when ask, people ask you where you went, and I went to Blair. And they just, oh yeah, they had a pretty good such and such team. And you, you nod your head, yeah, yeah, we did. So I was the only three sport athlete uh, my senior year, as I said, baseball, football, and I swam. And I was the comedic value in that one. Never heard of the 85 fly? Yeah, there isn't one. It's supposed to be 100. At 85, I just sunk to the bottom. I'd had enough and got pulled out. I'll never forget Hank Mallory, our baseball coach, when they did an article on Chick, when they did an article on Carlos Hernandez being the only three sport athlete in the school, the quote from Hank Mallory, my baseball coach was, I like him because he knows his limitations. Thanks coach, thanks a lot. But the funniest thing for us was Ed Smith was our baseball coach at JV, and he apparently is the only guy to ever cut Sonny Jackson. That's something that Ed's still not proud of today. Uh, I was aware of Bob Windsor. I was aware of Tom Brown, uh, guys like that that came through here because um, you aspired to be that good, to see Tom Brown as a, as a Green Bay Packer, as a Washington Senator. I went and did a story on him later. When I worked, when I first got back to town at Fox 5, won an Emmy Award for the story I did on Tom Brown, who obviously was a Blair guy, was a Washington Senator, uh, and was a Green Bay Packer, who now teaches kids athletics in Salisbury, Maryland, and young kids who are just learning the game. And you see somebody do that, you know that the, the message was passed on to Tom, and he's trying to pass on the message uh, to the young kids. That's the Blair lineage right there. I did a little, when uh, uh, Steve Barber died, I did a little phone interview with Tom Brown and said that they, they actually played against each other. Really? In, for the Senators. And then, of course, Tom Brown left that and went to play for football. Mm -hmm. And when he was playing football, he played against Bob Windsor. Ugh. So it's amazing how the it is. stuff well, The story of Brown was, remember, the, uh, I think it was Kennedy who, was, who said, is that Maryland kid going to play baseball today? And quickly the manager went, uh, yeah. <laughs> and they put him at first base, I think, and he started in that game, and he was flabbergasted.
Yeah, you can actually go online and get the box score of when Steve Barber was pitching against Tom Brown. Really? Yeah, I, I just think that's cool that, you know, Blair, I mean, the, 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 the wide world of professional sure. sports, and here these two kids, guys have played together at Blair, and they wind up in two different sports, professional sports, and they're all, all from Blair. Yeah, the tradition of uh, academics obviously has grown uh, uh, each, I think, generation at Blair. And for us, it was, it was there for us. It was, the teacher set the table. It's there for you to take. You can do with it what you want. We're telling you if you do the right thing, uh, you're going to be successful. There are so many people that are successful that come out of Blair. Uh, it's huge. Um, and I'll tell you, this may be off topic a little bit, but one of the, the, the memories, here's the tradition of Blair, diversity. 1981, Stevie Wonder's trying to get Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday holiday. He asked the school board, where's the most diverse school? I think without question, they said Montgomery Blair and Silver Spring. We either had a 99 or 101 different nationalities in that school at that time. And for him to come to our school on a half day when most students are gonna take off because it's an assembly and most people blow it off, Mrs. Mays just looked in my eye because she knew that I was a big Stevie Wonder fan and said, you might want to go today to the assembly. And I thought it was odd the way she said it. But every student was there and Stevie Wonder performed for two hours at our school and we were the talk of the nation that day. And diversity has been uh, a key component of Blair and it has taught anybody who's come through that school to treat others, whether they're different or similar, the same. I think Blair had a tradition of encouraging people to break down barriers, no question. In my travels, you know, when I go out and do stories and I've been across the country doing certain things and the, the conversation, you know, somehow gets to high school, they, where did you go? I went, to, I went to Montgomery Blair and, hey, didn't Goldie Hawn go there? Yeah. Didn't Connie Chung? Yeah. Yeah. And I bring up Ben Stein. We try to, we try to say Sylvester Stallone for about six weeks. We, we cop to that. Uh, it's amazing how many people know our high school. And the Stevie Wonder thing was still uh, pretty huge. And I've had several deal, a couple dealings with Stevie since then. And I always bring that up uh, about you, you came to my high school. And he goes, oh, and you know, it's, this was a, this was a great time here. It really was. Uh, you learned obviously a lot in class. Well, I think you learned more from the people that you dealt with, both teachers and students. And if you're doing it right, you form friendships that are lifelong. And I've got a good 10, 12 guys that I love dearly. We have grown up to be men, raise families, and we look back at Blair as really the, the cornerstone for that. Okay, because our shows were in the, in the uh, auditorium, and I, had to get, I got a special waiver during baseball season to be in the senior play. We did Guys and Dolls, and it was, again, you know, you're dealing, you dealt with so many different people, you know. I was a jock, didn't realize I was a, in that group, the jocks, you know, because I was also part of the thespians uh, and you could really go back and forth without any repercussions you know a lot of times kids can be can be brutal on you but at Blair it wasn't that way we all kind of just shared how I go from Blair to broadcasting uh, at Blair uh, certainly as a class clown I was used to dealing with uh, you know entertainment uh, and went to Maryland where I joined the uh, radio team there, WMUC Radio. There's still some Blair guys that went there as well. We both went there. Did you? Okay. And I uh, was doing, I did play-by-play -play for the basketball team there. And Larry Michael, a Northwood grad, who was the executive producer at Mutual Sports, hired me on as a producer. And really the rest is history. I got very lucky. I've sent two tapes out in my life. Uh, one to get a job at Augusta, Georgia at the CBS affiliate where I worked for three years and then one to Channel 5, which, and I got that job where I spent six years there at Fox 5, and now at Comcast Sportsnet, where we've been since the birth, April 4th, 2001. And I still go back. I've spoken at Blair. I, I spoke, I was a commencement speaker once. Probably the most nerve-wracking experience that I've had. I've talked to Jack Nicklaus, got a little nervous there. I've done several interviews with Tiger Woods, not nervous there. Commencement address for Blair. I had to wear two pairs of underwear.